The sponsor of the video is PCBWay. Now, they're one of the top PCB manufacturers out there, and you can quickly have your projects ready-made for you within 24 hours with their 24-hour service. They also do have assembly and flashing services, and it's the company I always use whenever I create a product and or project. So go ahead and check the links down below. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Flywoo BT Nano Bluetooth module. Now, this will go into your flight control and allow you to control beta flight, BL Heli S, and also iNav, whatever you might have through your phone, through an application. So this video might be slightly long, so I have a table of contents linked down below and it's also showing the video progress bar. So some of the things we're going to be covering in this video is UARTs and how do they work and what do they stand for and what can you think of them as and also the Bluetooth functionality and also the ports tab. We're going to slightly talk about the ports tab and the MSP serial section which you'll get to understand a little bit more uh, as this tutorial goes on. So the first thing we're going to cover is the installation setup. So now we have the Bluetooth module. We have a couple pads here. We have G, V, R, T. G is going to be ground, V is going to be the voltage, and R, T are going to be the UART. Now what does the R stand for? The R basically stands for receive data, and the T stands for transmit data. So it's very simple here. Now, if we look at any flight controller, you'll also see the same thing. They might not be called R and T. They're going to be called either RX1 or RX2 or T or TX2. So for example, here we have an R6 and also a T6. So this means you can consider the UARTs or the numbering of the UARTs as, as USB ports, basically. So R6 and a T6 will equal one full USB that will allow something to talk to this flight controller and this flight controller will talk something else. So here we have T6 and R6 open for us. So UART 6 is available and we could call it USB port 6 is available. Now here, there's only one so it doesn't really matter here, but the way these are connected to each other plays a really big role. Now maybe common sense might tell you the R will connect to an R, but that's not the case. So the R here, this is going to receive data. So we're going to need a transmit pin from the flight controller into the receive because this pin is just for receiving data. And we need the pin that just transfers data into this thing. So the R here is going to connect to a T on the flight controller. And if we take a closer look here, we have the T, the transmit data. So this wire is going to transmit data and we're going to need a receive pad on the flight controller to receive the transmitted data from the Bluetooth, which is going to be an R. So we just basically mix and match them. So an R will go to a T and a T would go to an R and it's just that simple. But you also need to take into consideration the port number, which is very important. You can't use a T4 and a R6. You, you can't do that because it, it just won't work because this is basically one whole USB and we need to occupy this USB here. So let's go ahead and connect this real quick. Now, meanwhile, you're connecting it, you need to take something into consideration as well. You need to remember the number that's on the flight controller. For example, right now we're using R6 and uh, T6 here. So let's first take a look at the uh, Bluetooth module here. We're gonna start with the first wire, which is going to be G, which is going to be ground, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ground wire. Now I'm going to find a G pad or a G and D pad, which is going to be just right here. There we go. So my ground is set. What's the next wire on the list here? The next wire is going to be the V, which is going to be either 5 volts or 3.3 volts as they're stating. I'm going to put it on a 5 volt right now. So the 5 volts right next to the ground here. So I'm just going to install that there. Now we're left with the last two wires, which are R and T. So now let's go ahead and start with the R. So we have just R and T left. So this is my R wire that's coming from the Bluetooth module. And the R, since it's received, we're going to need to find a T pad for transmitting data. And my T pad is right there. So I'm going to be using T6 and R6. So here's my T6. So Okay, and my last wire on the Bluetooth module is the T, which is going to go into an R on the flight controller. And again, I'm going to be setting it up on the UART6, which is going to be R6 here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and power our flight controller and also connect it to beta flight because like this, it won't work out of the box. You need to do one little modification into beta flight and it's just a click basically. We don't have to run any special commands. So I'm going to go ahead and power this guy. Now you need to make sure also that it's booted. Now from the five volt USB here, it won't boot my module. So I had to plug in a battery here. So that's what I did. So now our Bluetooth module is booting up, which is a great sign. So let's go ahead and jump into Betaflight and see what is the next step. 
All right, so once you're in the beta flight, obviously the first thing you want to do is connect. Now, once we're connected, the second thing we want to go for is the ports tab. So the ports tab, you can set them again as the USB ports tab that will tell what each port to do. And this is where you do that. This is the first and most important step. Now, remember how we used R6 and T6? So this is where we want to take a look at, which is UART6. Now, once we find the UART6, the second thing we need to look for is make sure everything is disabled, just like this. And we want to take a look at the MSP here. Now, the MSP is basically the multi we Serial Protocol, as far as I believe. I think that's what it stands for. And this is the thing that will allow it to connect to Betaflight or the Betaflight firmware and write the settings. And as you can tell on the first one, we have the USP and that's enabled. Make sure you don't disable that. If you disable this and you, you save and reboot, you will not you will no longer be able to connect to beta flight on your flight controller. So just be careful of that. That's why that's always connected here. Now, what we want to do is we want to kind of simulate the USB on UART 6. All we have to do is just click this right here, save and reboot, and that's it. For Betaflight, we're basically done now. So what we just told the flight controller is to accept inputs on UART6 to change and modify Betaflight settings and also on the USB that's already by default. But now basically we have two ways of connecting into Betaflight and changing our settings. And that is what the configuration MSP is for here. So now we are good to go here, save and reboot, just to make sure we save and reboot, it's very important. Now let's go ahead and jump into the flight controller back again. So now the next thing you want to do is you want to download this PDB application. However, if you're this close, usually it doesn't work. You're going to have to move this stuff a little bit further away. So let me show you how this works. Since everything is basically set, you don't need any passwords or anything. It might work. It worked. So this is new. They're just adding little ads and stuff here. So here it is, the Flywheel BT Nano. If we click on it, just give it a second and it'll log in. Whether you have iNav, Betaflight, and if you wanted to log into your BL Heli S, you can do that now, which is really crazy. So look at this. I'm moving the... For example, the quadcopter, and it's actually registering just like your beta flights uh, page on the PC. And here again, we could take a look at our ports where we enabled the MSP right there for UART 6. And you can change anything your heart desires here. Uh, filters, just the DShot protocol, so DShot 300, for example. Save and reboot, it'll save and reboot. Now, this is an absolute proper, proper application that covers just about, I think, I think everything. There's nothing missing here. It'll do everything, black box erasing. I think it'll even do flashing. I'm not sure. You can even do your, your VTX tables here. You can also even modify your on-screen display here, which is really crazy. Right on the fly, you can just change everything, enable stuff. So here's craft name. I enabled it. I want to put it there. Fly mode. So what kind of mode I'm flying. Very intuitive, very responsive. Save, and it automatically saves. And you can see this live in your goggles if you have your goggles on as well. So it's a proper application made by a proper company. Now, this is from the SpeedDB company, uh, this application. They also do have a couple uh, flight controller boards if you wanted to take a look at those as well. I'll have them linked down below. And this is a game-changing application by SpeedDB. I really love it. I do use it every once in a while, depending on which quadcopter I have that has Bluetooth built in. And um, now with these little cheap modules, you just plug and play. You don't have to flash any of them. You don't have to do anything. Just plug them, enable the MSP port, and that's it. You're good to go. Now, there's also one thing you need to take into consideration is that your phone must be able to use the BLE or the Bluetooth low energy uh, modules. All right, guys, and that's going to include it for this video, guys. It's a very simple video. Hopefully, someone learned a thing or two from the video. Everything is linked down below if you want to go ahead and check those out. These are very useful, especially in FPV wings more than anything, in my opinion. Also in quadcopters, recently built quadcopters are very useful because once you have it tuned and everything is set up, your filters are all set up. It's just a really nice interface to go in and modify things. And once you have that all done, you can just unplug it, put it on the side for your next build or so, or your next update where, or your next tuning session, basically. They're really nice, and you could do some sort of a connector if you wanted in the future. You just pop that in. So they are very, very useful, and at the same time, also very, very cheap, and also very, very uh, light as well. And again, everything's linked down below. If you could check those out, those great support channel. And come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways. Go ahead and check it out. You'll see what kind of giveaways I do. New Patreons for the month usually get their own separate giveaway. Like last month, I just had two new ones, and they get their own premium giveaway between each other. And I do more than 10 giveaways per month. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everything's linked down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.